This video is sponsored by gportal. They host all of my servers and I have to say they are pretty awesome. You can save 10% with my link in the description. Subscribe for more Valheim. Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you exactly how to create a custom dungeon. Now I did this a lot for my new survival and no map adventure servers, which launched this weekend and you can sign up to play on those if you're really looking for some new content. We have over 140 uh, locations all throughout this, the, uh, the map and we have content in every biome, including Mislins, the uh, Ashlands, and the the deep north new uh, content and mobs and we have respawning dungeons and all kinds of cool stuff it requires a simple mod pack you can download Jirox uh, survival or no map mod packs and you can play those on your single player if you want or if you want you can join us in multiplayer and do it but today I'm going to show you how I created some of those custom dungeons on the on that server and also I'm getting this dungeon ready because our permanent servers the uh, Viking Playground and its companion server, the resource server, which resets every two weeks with a new map and a new seed. I like to put a custom POI or some kind of an event, and today I'm going to do a custom dungeon on it. So I thought since I'm going to build that dungeon, I'm going to show you how I did it. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the dungeons or a version of one of the dungeons that I made on my season two server here on my resource server for the players to check out. And these dungeons dungeons are a modular system that I've come up with so I can put them in different configurations to make them a little bit different each time. Okay, so you can start with a dungeon, a troll cave, frost cave, sunken crypt, burial chamber, and if you want you could go into it and you can fly outside of it. Oh, I should tell you, you're going to need a, a few mods to do this in creative mode. You're going to want your Kusala's uh, server dev commands, world edit, and infinity hammer. That'll make doing this super easy. Then also a mod called plan build. If you want to do copy and pasting of builds and use my modular dungeon system, which you can actually sign up on my game master level of my Patreon and you'll get access to my season one map so you can play and have fun there. But you can also get access to a bunch of blueprints that I'm uploading every week to make building even more fun. And so let's get back to it. OK, so if you've got a dungeon like this. It's in this uh, sky box. If I fly outside the sky box, you can see there's a bunch of sky boxes. There's another dungeon over there that'll be on the ground. And inside here, this dungeon, I can delete this dungeon so that when the players come through this white box here, they'll come into my custom dungeon. Let me just show you how that would be done. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say um, object remove. I'm going to do ID equals star. And I'm going to do a radius of 50 so it deletes the mobs the dungeon and everything there we go so it's all gone nothing left and so we have this portal here and if i went through it i'm going to sh show up outside right before i came in for that burial chamber now if you go through now and you try to come back it's going to tell you that it's blocked because whenever you come through it it looks for a floor to step on if there's no floor to step on it will be blocked and then you'll have to fly back up here uh, as admin or in your creative mode so I just recommend going ahead and dropping some floor pieces here, whatever you want to use. I personally like to use one of the stone floors that is not uh, on the build menu for some reason. It's just called stone floor and it's a four by four floor. And it's pretty cool. If you're using gizmo too, you can rotate it and you have the other side, which is pretty cool. I like to use that grid pattern for ceilings and then this flatter pattern for flooring. So I'm just going to stick this here and this here and that portal actually supports them you can see they are blue so now if i come through here there you go i'm outside the dungeon so when the players come in they're going to experience my custom dungeon which right now there is no dungeon so i mean that's basically how you do this but i'm going to show you a few tips that you're going to want to know so you could build here and do whatever you want uh, if you have plan build you can paste blueprints so you can come in here, let's see, I'm gonna find uh, my hallway, there we go. So I've got this hallway, and if I bring it up over here, and I target about 
there. I can paste this. And uh, yeah, these are our ice floors. I use them to support the structure. So now if I come outside my dungeon and then I come in, let's see if I lined it up correctly. Oh, it looks like I didn't quite line it up correctly. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Yep, okay, let's try that again. So that's pretty easy to do. You just do BP undo, and it'll undo that if you're using plan build. So uh, I'm going to do this again, and let's see if I can get this right. You know what, I wonder, oh, there you go. It's because I had my rotation not set properly. So what I wanna do is target right there, right in the center at the bottom, and then I'm gonna equip this, and then I'm gonna paste that there. Now when I come through, if I get out of fly mode, here's my dungeon, and I'm going to run in. Now, you can build your dungeon. Check this out. This is my, one of my custom rooms that I built uh, as a starter room leading into the dungeon, and then you can just start branching off into different directions. Now, you could build this by hand. You can fly around. You can build this by hand. I'm going to BP undo that. You can just build the dungeon by hand, or you can paste rooms that you uh, have built and saved, or you can get some of my cool blueprints. We have a huge dun modular dungeon system that we're putting together, and right now we've got four or five different themes, lots of rooms, hallways, stairwells, all kinds of cool stuff, boss rooms, lots of fun things to play with. All right, so if you build here, though, let me show you one of the issues. So I have some pretty elaborate dungeons, and if I want to place a lot of rooms, it's going to raise my instance count. It could raise my instance count as much as five or six or 7,000. And if we look at our instance count now, you see up in the upper right-hand corner, it says 4,500 already. So that means that players will come here with over 10,000 instances if I build an elaborate dungeon here. And 10,000 instances will start to cause a little bit of lag for the players, especially if uh, there's a few of them that come out here. You know, if it's one or two, maybe not too bad, but yeah, you get five, six, seven players out here and a 10,000 or higher instance count. It's going to make for a rough experience, especially with all the mobs that are in here. So why is it 4,500 already? You see, there's nothing up here. There's only these three pieces. Well, that's because if I go through here and I check my instance count, you see it's 4,500. That's because of all the rocks, the trees, the forest, all the stuff that's down here. And let me turn on my zone lines and see. Okay, see my zone lines there? I turned them on. This is a mod also by Jirkusula called ESP. You can see the zone lines. So this here, and you know, they're labeled, you know, for Black Forest or whatever. But this is a 64 by 64 meter area. This is the exact dimensions of the skybox up in the sky, 64 by 64. And so everything uh, in this area and everything in the surrounding uh, little loading zones is all adding to my instance count. So building a custom dungeon out of one of these crypts here is going to cause you problems, instance problems. So let me show you how to deal with that. There's two ways to deal with that. So one of the things you can do is you can come through here and you can place down a portal. And when players come through, you, of course, you can build a room around this. When they come through, then they can go through your portal to wherever your dungeon is. And I'll show you the ideal place to put the dungeon. So you can do that if you want this entrance or a troll cave or a frost cave or a sunken crypt. You can have a little antechamber here, just build a small room, however big you want it. You know, maybe you don't want the portal that close, so you can build up a small room. One of the fun things about this is that the uh, atmosphere inside these sky boxes is beautiful. It's this nice, dark, misty environment, and it's got some cool sound effects. Uh, yeah, so that's what makes this really fun to build your dungeons in. But again, the instance count is the problem. But I'm going to show you how to get this uh, without the instance count problem. So you can build this small room with a portal that goes to your dungeon, which I'm going to show you where to place. Or you can just bypass this all together. I don't want it here. There we go. That dungeon's completely gone now. So instead of placing that there, I can place my own dungeon entrance, which I think can be cooler anyways. Let's see, which one do I want to use? So this dungeon entrance here, we built this custom dungeon entrance, but I got to prepare the ground for it. So I've got a command to delete everything right there. And then I've got another command that's going to smooth the ground for me. There you go. 
and then I can place this here. I'm going to place it right about there. So that's my custom dungeon entrance. I think it looks even cooler than the ones that are in the game. Check this out. We got vines all over. Got some torches to light it up, which will look really cool at night. And the players can come into here and then go into my custom dungeon. Because right there is a portal hidden right there. Now we're going to do ritual. Yeah, we're going to do ritual. Let's call this ritual one. All right. So here you can build your own custom dungeon entrance. Looks pretty cool. Okay. Yep. But now there's no skybox above it, right? And the instance count is really high. No problem. Because we are not going to build our dungeon directly above this. Instead, we are going to come over to here in the ocean. You can fly out there. You could teleport out there if you have a teleport mod. Allows you to shift and left click. So I'm going to come out here. I'm going to watch my instance count. Look at that. It's already super low. And I'm just going to come out a little bit further here. Yep, somewhere. It was really low over here. There we go. 39 right here. Look at that. 39 instance count. Now I could build a six, seven uh, thousand instance dungeon here. And I won't have to you know, worry about getting over 10,000. And the players can not have to worry about as much lag or almost no lag at all. Okay, so but how do we get the sky dungeon skybox up into the sky above this? Now I could build the dungeon up in the sky above this, but it's not going to have that cool environment without the dungeon skybox. Well, that's no problem. I'm just going to come down. Oop, I'm going to come down to the ground here. I'm going to do a command called hammer underscore location. And then I'm going to say crypt three. I like the crypt three. So I'm going to place that here, the bottom of the ocean. Look at that. That's at the bottom of the ocean here. So now when I come into here, look at this. I now have a sky box above the ocean. So I'm going to mark this location so I don't forget. I'm going to call this dungeon. And I have this cool sky box where if I reset my environment, I will get this cool, creepy environment of the of the crypt maybe up oh, there we go I got to come out of admin fly mode for that so check that out I got the cool environment that I want okay let's clear that up and now I need to delete all this cuz the players are never going to be able to get to that entrance down there uh, cuz it's way below the ocean on the ocean floor so I'm just going to go find my command that I did object remove ID equals star star means everything If you put something besides a star then it'll search the radius that you put for just that particular item and only delete that item But in this case, I want to delete everything. So I'm going to delete everything It deletes everything but the portal And I'm not going to use this portal because the players can't get to it. It's at the bottom of the ocean Instead, I'm just going to fly down a little bit and ignore that I'm going to come over to, I like to start in the corners, right? So here's the corner. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to spawn in. So instead of the stone floor, I'm going to spawn in an ice floor that you see in the frost caves because these actually support other structures and they float. So I'm going to say spawn object ice underscore floor. No, not fractured. We don't want fractured. We just say ice floor. And then we're going to rescale it by saying scale equals one comma point one comma one. And there you go. Check that out. You got an ice floor here. Actually, I'm going to want this to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to spawn another one and make that one a little bit longer. There we go. So I'll delete that one. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to reposition it here. See, I want to find the edges of where the skybox starts to go out. Put it about right there because that's where I want to start building, and then delete the other ones. So if I go out, you can see it's sticking out. The players will never see that. No big deal. But here you go. Check this out. Yep, okay. So now I can start to place my dungeons. And as a matter of fact, you know what? I think I want to start a little bit over to the side here. So I'm going to copy this, just paste that on top of that, delete that other one. Now I'm over to the side just a little bit. And being as close to the edge as possible allows me to build in that direction much more so before I run into the wall. Okay, so now you can start building here. So before I get into showing you how I do it with plan build in my modular dungeon system, show you how you can do it manually. You can place your, you know, you can start to build your blocks here, uh, whatever blocks you want. You know, you start to build your floor, you know, your entrance to your dungeon. 
you know, you can get your wall here, um, you know, how, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is going to be hideous at first here. And then you could place your portal right there and you could name it um, Ritual One. Oh, there we go. Now it connected. Okay, great. So as you see, as I go through here, I'm going to come out next to my custom dungeon entrance. And once the players find this, they can come in. Of course, they're going to check it out. It's in the usual structure. They know they can't build. It's got all the vines and cool stuff on it. And rotation with gizmo to make it look ruined. And here you go. You start your custom dungeon. And as I come out of... Uh, change my environment I got that cool environment and I could build my custom dungeon it can spawn monsters in here and fight and then when they're ready to leave they can just leave yeah so that's how you do that so now if you want to use the modular dungeon system and start using some of the uh, blueprints from my game master patreon pack uh, you also get access to that if you join my servers at the elite level you can use my blueprints and let me show you how that is super cool. So I like to start with uh, a simple hallway. So I've got this dungeon hallway here and I'm going to place this. See, I got my snap point set right where the floor is. And I want to just make sure that this is lined up. Yep, you can see it's uh, pretty square with the box. So I don't want the whole thing to be crooked. Place the first one straight and then you can get all the rest of them straight. I'm going to raise it a little bit right there. I'm going to place it. I'm going to come into here. Now I want to just close this off. Boom. So now the players will never see that. And then I'll place a portal right here. Like that. Nope, I'm going to place that portal. Oh, you know what I want to do? I actually like when I place uh, one of my door cappers. So you see each of my rooms, they have the standard door system, my modular dungeon system. And if I, I have door cappers for each of these rooms. And so I'm going to place a door capper here that I have. And this is ritual. So I'm going to place this one with the skulls. But I'm going to put it uh, right about there. Is that the one I want to use? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we're going to place that one right there. There we go. Check that out. And now my portal will go right in front of that. And then I'll rename this portal Ritual 1, and it'll connect. And this is the start of my dungeon. And so I want my dungeon to go forward that way. So I'm going to cap off this doorway here because I'm not going to use it. Plus, this is really close to the edge of the wall of the sky box, so I'm not going to build in that direction. So I'm just going to cap this one off too, and I'm going to cap it off with this one here. And do I want it to come into the room a little bit? A couple of options. You can have it kind of flush with the wall. You can have it coming out. You could even recess it more if you wanted to. Uh, let's see, like that which can be kind of a cool look. It's a three-dimensionality, right? Like it's either sticking out or it's going in, just kind of having it flat run across the wall. Doesn't look as cool. But yeah, so this is the start of my dungeon. And, uh, you know, the next room, who knows? I've got a bunch. I've got a whole lot of dungeons, uh, rooms and stuff that I can paste to build this. And eventually I will f go down... Um, probably, you know, get six, seven rooms, hallways, stairwells and stuff. That usually is a good amount and uh, fill it with mobs and then the players will have a lot of fun. So now I'm just going to speed this up so you can watch me build the entire dungeon to completion.
Okay, there you go. There is my custom dungeon already done. I mean, there's a few finishing touches. I need to close off a few more doorways and stuff. But let's start. Let me run you through this and show you. So we know when the players come through the portal, they're going to have this nice, cool, dark environment. They're going to see my cool door cappers with these you know, different things you build. Uh, one of the tricks here, if you have, uh, you pick, you want to decorate with something that's pickable, like a skeleton or these totems, if you put forge bellows and you turn them on their side, the, these are all the legs of the forge bellows. Uh, you can't really see them here, but they're, they're there. See, there's all the forge bellows. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Um, the forge bellows causes the players to target that instead of your pickable item, so they can't get it. Check this out. I've got a meat pile there, some forge bellows, uh, a, uh, some skeletal remains here, and over here too. And the players can't pick that. Now, I have asked uh, Iron Gate, uh, Jonathan, if he can come up with a way that I can have these not be pickable by the players. Uh, and there he they may consider that in the future but for now this is the best solution i have is to use the forge bellows okay and so my path continues through there so i need to close off this doorway here so i'm going to do that here real quick let's see we're going to put um gonna put another totem i think feels right and i want it sticking into the room there yeah, so that one's recessed that one's sticking out there we go yeah. Okay. And then now uh, I like to use vines or Fenris hair or the car carpets or something. And the players can walk through that. But because they have infinite health, they can't shoot through it and shoot the mobs on the other side. And the reason why that's important is because, see, I've got this blocker block here or this beam right here. This is just a wood beam in between. And then there's another one there. There's two wood beams to give it one meter distance. So that way the mobs are going to try to come here. They can't get through. And the players are here and they can't get through. So the players need to actually come into the room to engage the mobs. And the mobs can't chase them. Because I don't want the whole dungeon to just, uh, mobs throughout the dungeon to just be chasing the players through everywhere. So they get stuck in these rooms here with these little blockers. Because we can't use doors. This is in place of doors. Unfortunately, uh, doors, because I have to ward this dungeon so the players can't break it apart. With the stonecutter's bench or a workbench for the wood items. I have to ward it. And so uh, these prevent, they kind of act like doors. You know, the mobs, if you close the door, the mob wouldn't be able to get through it. But in this case, the mobs get stopped here and you can't shoot through it. So you actually have to go in to engage. So here again, another skeleton uh, on the, in, who got his head chopped off there. And I have to use these forge bellows so the players can't target the skeleton and pick the remains. Okay, so I need to close this off because my dungeon goes off that way. So I'm going to close off this door right here let's see we're gonna use uh, skeletons and we're gonna have them come into the room we're gonna do that over here too let's spin it around there we go and check that out pretty cool yeah, I've got uh, a f quite a few door or I've got a few door cappers now for the different themed dungeons and uh, yeah wanna wanna start making some more as we get some more themed dungeons going I think we have four or five uh, different themed dungeons now and lots of rooms for them. Uh, yeah. So this again, this goes through here. Boink. And it comes into my next room. And this just continues. So I, right, what I'm doing right now is checking to see that I don't have any open doorways that where players can fall out of the dungeon. And again, checking my instances. Look at that. Because I'm building over the ocean, only 4,500. So that's pretty cool. So here's another room. This room doesn't go anywhere. It's just going to be where there'll be a treasure chest I'll place in here. And yeah, so they've got this to deal with. And um, run through the dungeon some more. Check to make sure that all my doors are closed off. The next hallway, some cages with some bones in them. Next stairwell comes down to, oh, looks like this hallway was fortified at one point, fighting off enemies. And then we come down to the next one, and this one's closed off. And then it goes into the boss room, which, check this out, 
pretty cool looking boss room. Yep. And so, yep, now I'm going to go ahead and populate this. And I also place some chests throughout for the players to uh, find some cool stuff. All right. Well, this video has run a little bit long. But, yeah, if you have questions about how this is done, I actually have a Game Master uh, Discord channel. You can come on there. You can ask me. A couple of the modders who have made some of the mods that I use hang out in that channel, and they can answer questions, too. And we can get you started building custom content for your friends or your servers or maybe even for yourself if you want. I actually love running these dungeons uh, with my character, uh, with the players too. It's a tons of fun, even though I know what to expect. It's still a challenge, it's still fun, and the camaraderie is really great. All right, let me know if you have any questions. That's it for now. Have fun out there. You like Viking stuff? I like Viking stuff. Well, you should check out my sponsor, The Grimfrost. They have thousands of modern and historical Viking products. So many cool things here on this website. And just use my link in the description. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my supporters, some of them on Patreon, the YouTube membership, and the ones who help boost our Discord server. Your support means the world to me and inspires me to make more videos, as well as run a community Discord and multiple Valheim gaming servers. If you enjoy my videos and would like to support my work, join our friendly Discord community and Valheim servers, links can be found in the description below. Skull!